Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of our, or I guess our monthly installment of Let's Plan. Uh, so it is now rolling into March. Um, little update, we, my wife and I, we completed our move successfully. <clears throat> uh, moving is never fun, but we didn't have a whole lot, seeing as how we knew that the place that we were living at was not going to be in any way permanent for us so our mindset was well we're not going to load up with a bunch of material possessions especially big ones so we didn't buy a bunch of things so our move wasn't too bad plus we had some help from some friends which uh, was very nice and it still kicked my ass <laughs> so um, I something I said to a few of my friends was that I should do less let's play videos and more let's exercise videos because wow it really showed me how out of shape I've become. So I'm looking forward to getting a real job. Um, speaking of which, I will be getting a real job, J-O-B job, jobby job, uh, sometime soon, hopefully, so I can start making some money, probably part-time, um, just something to mm, make some money, number one, but also to get me some exercise and get me out of this apartment and also just there are sometimes where I, it's kind of funny but there's sometimes where I sit around and I'm just like I really wish I had a job <laughs> so um, yeah gonna be getting a job and I'm I what I'm thinking is gonna happen is once I get a job uh, probably gonna go ahead and try to get a twitch streaming schedule set up as long as my job work schedule is set which it may not be at first. I mean, you guys know how jobs are. Jobs, um, you know, when you first get a job, your schedule can be very, very not, <laughs> not set in stone. Uh, so once I get a, a set schedule at, you know, the job that I get, then I will probably try to start streaming uh, at least three days a week on Twitch for a couple hours at a time. We'll see. Uh, and you know the games that I will stream on Twitch may be the same as what I make Let's Plays for but it pro there's a good chance that you'll see games on Twitch that you won't see in Let's Plays because there are some games that I like to play that just don't really Let's Play very well um, you know MMOs aren't really very good for Let's Play series but I really like to play them um, I've really been hooked lately on a game called Rust which I'm sure all of you know about and I don't think just the normal gameplay for Rust would Let's Play very well, but I think that uh, it could be pretty entertaining for a stream, however. Um, anyways, so I guess you can be looking forward to that. Uh, anyways, so I'm thinking that for March, we're going to do some different things, but we're going to, some things are going to stay the same, some things are going to change up a little bit. If you have been keeping up with, um, kind of my recordings you would notice that Mountain Blade has stopped and the reason that Mountain Blade stopped was because uh, there just wasn't a whole lot of interest in it now that's not to say that people were not watching it I know that some of you were watching it and you were commenting on it and I do really appreciate your support and I had a lot of fun with it but um, I felt like the series had went on for quite some time and you know I think I'd been been let's playing it for like two months and it just didn't have a huge following, so I decided that I would go ahead and cut it out of the rotation and we would replace it with something new or different uh, in, in March. Also, uh, Darkest Dungeon is coming to an end. I decided that uh, episode 30 would be the last episode and we're going to do something new going into March as well. I really enjoy Darkest Dungeon uh, quite a bit, but um, I think that... It's one of those games that I, I feel like it's it's very formulaic and repetitive. Bad things can happen to you, but if you're playing the game, I feel like if you're playing the game well and you're doing a good job, that most of the episodes are going to be pretty dang boring because people are going to be seeing the, the same strategies over and over and over again, which if you've watched any of my Darkest Dungeon stuff, that's probably what you saw. You probably saw me do a lot of the same things over and over and over again so uh, I just felt like it probably was was due to end 
And so I've done that. I've ended it. Um, going forward in March, this is what I'm thinking. It's not set in stone. It's tentative. So if anybody has any input or ideas about things you'd like to see played, feel free to share. doesn't necessarily mean that I'll go with what you say, but, but I always listen to everything that you guys say, even if I don't um, necessarily go down that route. I am always listening and considering. Of course, we're going to have our new Door Fortress series starting uh, in in March, somewhere around the beginning of March. I have not settled on a theme for the series yet. Uh, so far, the only thing that I've really thought about was the Tundra theme, where basically there will be no trees above ground. So the idea is we're going to have to basically bring just enough wood with us for beds. And then we're going to have to try to breach a cavern layer as quickly as we can. Um, and also probably create a cavern layer for us so that we can get trees. Which I've never done that before. Uh, alternatively, we could just try to do... I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to think about this one off cam. Because there's a lot of different things that you could do with Dwarf Fortress. And I've read through a lot of the challenge type stuff. And to be honest, it really sounds more torturous than fun. Um, and I'm not really about playing games just to torture myself for the entertainment of others. Um, now, if I'm having a good time while torturing myself, ooh, okay. But, uh, yeah, anyways. I feel like Dwarf Fortress in and of itself is a bit torturous because of all the UI and the menus and everything. So, um, I still have fun, but I feel like if I was to go down a route where I was doing something super, super dif difficult, that I would probably stop having fun. So, anyways. Um, I'm going to continue with the CK2 Irish Spring series because I've met with quite a bit of positive reception from that. Um, if you're not familiar, that is the CK2 series that I'm doing that is designed directly at beginner level CK2 players <clears throat> to introduce them to the various mechanics in the game in a way that is, um, I guess, a little bit more methodical than you would normally see in some of my other CK2 videos. Um, taking the time to actually explain actions, uh, explain my thoughts, and go through, you know, like battle strategies and the who, what, when, where, why's, and how's. So um, if you're a veteran to CK2, it may be a little bit, actually a lot of it slow for you because, um, you know, it is taking a while to get through things. But if you have always wondered about CK2 and you just never been sure where to start or if you picked up CK2 took a look at it for five or ten minutes and said wow this is way too complex um, you might check that series out because I think you might enjoy it um, thinking that we might do a Stardew Valley series because that's a game that kind of tickles my fancy a little bit it's a harvest moon ish game and I do enjoy some uh, farming dating sim so it just came out just a few days ago. I have not purchased it yet, but I'm thinking about picking it up and starting a series with it. So um, maybe look forward to that in you know somewhere around the beginning of March. And also I'm thinking about starting a series for Clockwork Empires. Now, Clockwork Empires is a game that is in early access right now. Um, it is made by the same people who made Dungeons of Dreadmore. If you're familiar, I think it's Gaslamp Games, which Dungeons of Dreadmore is a fantastic uh, roguelike game if you are into roguelike games um, it's really good I thought about actually doing it instead of Clockwork Empires but Clockwork Empires is more akin to Banished or something like that uh, but it has a weird technological slash Thulean influence in it so I'm thinking we might showcase that for a little bit last time I played it was probably about a year ago and it was pretty buggy slash bare bones. Now it is still in alpha. So it might still be pretty buggy slash bare bones, but we'll at least take a look at it. And uh, you know, that'll, that way you guys can see it and you can say, oh, this looks pretty fun. I'll add that to my radar or put that on my radar. Or, nope, doesn't interest me. And uh, <clears throat> let's talk about the best new metal bands. So, um, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, and new metal was something that really defined my teenage years. Uh, just take a look at me. And anyways, so I decided to talk about some of the best new metal bands today. So, obviously, the best new metal band ever, 
because it has to be Limp Bizkit. Best new metal band ever. Um, Fred Durst, excellent songwriting. Great songwriter. Um, real A real role model for the teenagers of the late 90s. <sighs> Just thinking about those late 90s with Limp Bizkit. Uh, Nickelback. Yeah, Chad Kroger. Canadian sensation, Chad Kroger. Um, you know, Nickelback was, was got big right in the early 2000s, I think. They released an album, I want to say in the late 90s, that was didn't really sound a whole lot like Nickelback and was actually pretty decent. And then after that, it, we, we they became the Nickelback that we know and we respect as one of the best new metal bands ever. So, um, yeah. Nickelback's really good. Uh, Tom Clancy's The Division comes out on March 8th. I know a lot of people are pretty pumped up about that. I'm not so much into the first person type stuff. Now, it's funny because I just said like five minutes ago that I've really been getting into Rust. But it's mainly because Rust is, you know, it's kind of like a PvP FPS, but it's also got a lot of building and stuff like that. That's kind of what ticks my buttons a little bit. Um... So, I don't know a whole lot about this game, except for the fact that it's got a lot of hype surrounding it. So, Tom Clancy's The Division, March 8th. Um, WWE 2K16 comes out sometime in March. When I looked around, uh, the date, the actual date, is just ephemeral. It's somewhere up in the atmosphere. Um, I don't know. But if you are into the WWE series, which I know a lot of people really enjoy it. I mean, hey, I enjoyed it. Two, way back in the day I don't I tried I think WWE 2k15 and it was kind of complicated to, to play I don't know wrestling is kind of like a, a dirty a guilty little pleasure of mine I and sometimes I enjoy it and and then I just forget about it it's it's weird like when I like it I like it and then I just it just I don't even think about it when I don't so uh, another great New metal band was Corn or is Corn? Corn still around? Can you believe it? Corn just released an album not too long ago. Um, you know, I still like Corn. I still like Corn. I still like old Corn. Um, but they're so angsty. Very, very angry. They're still angry. They've been angry for like 15 years. 15 years? Holy shit, it's been like 25 years. Where's all the time gone? I'm old. Anyways, moving on. Black Desert Online comes out March 3rd. Now, if you bought, uh, if you bought into the game as a pre-order, um, depending on what package level you got, there were three different packages you can get in on early access. Which ranges from one day ahead, two days ahead, to four days ahead. I bought in uh, just to toot, 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 toot my own horn here, uh, I bought into the top level package, so I get in four days early, which means as of this recording, I get in in like nine hours. So I'm going to be checking it out. I've, I've played a little bit in closed beta test two, and what I walked away with was, number one, character creation is pretty cool. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of things that you can modify and change about your characters that you wouldn't normally get to change with other in other games like hair length and weird things like that uh, but then there are other things that are surprisingly kind of missing um, like you know when you settle on a class you you're you're locked into that that uh, gender as well so like you know if you want to play um, Oh, if you want to play, I can't remember what it was, like a tamer. Yeah, if you want to play an animal tamer, you're locked into female. You don't, you, there's no option for a male animal tamer. And, I don't know. I guess the, the reason that they did that it was because of how in-depth the character creation goes with, like, the different, adjusting the different things. If they had to do that for two different models, whatever, I don't know. I'm probably just talking about my patoot. Um... But that struck me, it also struck me as like, there is a lot going on in this game. I mean, uh, it really kind of made my head spin. You know, it, it's it's different, because a lot of MMOs nowadays that you get into very much like take you by the hand and they say, okay, okay come this way. Um, and Black Desert Online 
kind of tries to do that in some aspects, but in other aspects, you're just like, what the f is this? Like, um, you know, when you create your character, you have to pick like a horoscope sign and you're, and that has to do with like how other people react with you, which is a very, very Asian thing. Um, nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying it's very, very Asian, the horoscope, much bigger prominence in Asia, uh, than it is in the, in the U S but, uh, and then there's like mini games where you have to like go and you have to like talk to people and I was just bewildered. You know, normally with most MMOs, I know exactly what I'm doing for the most part. You know, I've played a lot of them. Most of them. Most of the big ones, if you can name it, I've probably played it. But this one's a little different. There's a lot going on to it. Um, I didn't play it for very long. I have heard from some people that there is a lot of content to it. But I've also heard people say that there's not a lot of in-game content. So I really don't know, because I'm hearing conflicting reports. I mean, I guess there could be a lot of content without being a lot of in-game content. It could be very, very wide and not very, very deep. But uh, yeah, I'll be doing that, uh, Black Desert Online. So I guess if any of you end up picking up or playing Black Desert Online, feel free to leave a comment below this with your character name or something and we can get in touch we can be we can be bffs and then uh another game that caught my eye was villagers on march 25th i thought that that looked pretty interesting on steam um you guys know me you know what kind of games i'm into and and this this one kind of uh struck a little bit of a chord with me um I like the whole, you know, village management type thing. So, and there were a few other games that I thought looked interesting, but I, d I didn't really deem them worth, you know, necessary of your time or taking up this time. So, um, February was pretty busy, I thought, for as, as far in so much as releases. I feel like March is maybe a little slower. So, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, um, so yeah. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and supporting the different series. Um, means a lot to me. You know, as of as of this recording, which is on February 27th, we are sitting at 279 subscribers. So we started in August. So uh, how many months is that? August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Seven months, and we've picked up uh, 280 subscribers in seven months which isn't terrible it's not too bad at all um, it's been a little bit slower since the start of the new year but I think there there's a lot of things into that I mean I've heard from a lot of people that January is always kind of slow in terms of YouTube growth um, probably people making resolutions to where they say my resolution is I'm not gonna be on YouTube so much and then yeah, well then they they all come back around March or April, I guess. And um, the content's been a little bit spottier. I'm trying something a little bit new because I've had a few people say that they just can't keep up as well with my older pace where I was like four videos a day, four videos a day, four videos a day. And I certainly don't want to discourage people. I'm trying to find a happy balance between putting out enough content to grow but also putting out not so much content that it frustrates people who want to watch more than one series. So I'm always looking for input on that as well in terms of like the pacing of the content. Is it too much? Is it too little? Feel free to comment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all ears. So anyways, so yeah, 280 subscribers. Uh, almost got 40,000 views for the channel, which is really neat, you know. And hopefully we just keep growing, grow our community, have some fun. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the different game series. Until then, game on.